because this is the fifth and final in our July webinar series. And we are very pleased today to have Cheryl Scott with us. Cheryl, you did this for our conference a couple months ago, and it went very well. So I expect nothing less today. I'm just going to say I have a high uh, standard bar set for you here this afternoon. Hello and welcome, Cheryl. Thanks. OK, we're going to talk about online instructor access. This is allowing your instructors to access the course information and rosters that they teach via ACEWEB. Via ACEWEB, instructors can view selected course information. They can view print or print, view and or print course and workshop rosters. They can print an attendance sheet. They can email students. If you have the optional attendance tracking model module, they can record session attendance. They can record hours, credits, and grades, and they can submit a course proposal into the database. OK, so instructors. This is the instructor screen. They have to have an instructor record. That record sorry, has to be active. Only active instructors are allowed to enroll, uh, view their rosters online. Their ASWEB access level has to be set to at least one. Zero is no access. So even if they have their login credentials, um, if you've got them set to zero, they just get an authorized to view course list. If you don't want them to view rosters, all you want them to do, all you want them to do is see a list of the courses they teach. You would set them to one. Two allows them to view rosters. Three, four, and five allow them to view rosters, but also edit some information, edit hours, grade, or credits. If you want them to be able to email students, you also need to check the view student email box on their record. And so if that box is not checked and you're showing them the email, the people that don't have it checked won't, won't see the email column at all. And they won't get the options to email anybody. OK, login credentials. Unlike users who can use their email address to log in, Instructors only can, can only use their login ID number. So you have to give them the login ID. And then they're going to have a temporary password. It's going to be the first and last initials and the five-digit zip code. Um, for Chuck, it would be CH66502. And then once the instructor logs in the first time, then they're, they can, they're allowed to go in and set themselves a permanent password. OK, so now logging in. They're going to go to your web page, and they're going to click some kind of rosters link to take them to the instructor.awp page. They're going to log in their credentials. They're going to edit that, uh, enter that ID and the password, the temporary password the first time. And then they're going to get some options. By default, that show current and upcoming courses is going to be um, checked. But if they want to see other courses taught in the past, um, gradebook links to if they're doing a workshop, if they're listed as a teacher on online or membership courses, they'll be checking one of those. So once they make all the uh, options there, then they click all login. And they're going to get to a page like this. This is a Chuck, and you can see that He's teaching four courses right now. Um, he gets the course, how many are enrolled, if there's anybody on the waiting list, um, what the max is, begins, ends, and meets. If you're allowing him ability to view rosters, then he's going to get that column that says roster with the list buttons. If you have the optional attendance tracking module, then you're going to get that second column of buttons that's uh, labeled attendance, and then they'll get the track buttons. If you're allowing them gradebook access, that would be level three, four, or five, then they're going to get that second table that has the gradebook button. 
um, to view, to, to edit gradebooks. So once they pick, they click the list, then they get a roster. This is the class we chose to view. You can see that by default, um, there's some default settings as to what info that they can see, or you can control it as to what roster information. We've chosen to show name, phone, and email address. It'll tell him how many is enrolled. It'll give him the begin and end date, the meet, and a link to the location record. Underneath the table, they can print the roster. They can save the roster to an Excel worksheet, or they can print an attendance sheet, or they can email the students. They can email individually, or they can email all students. That the, the information is determined by this INI setting called roster fields. It defaults to name, address, phone, and email, but it, you saw in my previous setting, I set it to just name, phone, and email. You have control over what your instructors are going to be able to see for each student that's enrolled in their class. Now, workshop rosters. This is a workshop course, and there's going to be an extra drop down that you'll see just above the enrollment count. The user will pick, or the instructor will pick from the um, list what workshop they want to view. And once they pick it, then there's another button I'll show up that says show roster for above workshop. They check that box. And then they get a, a workshop roster. And it was the same information, in our case, name, phone, and email. Um, but they get a list that they can print or they can save to Excel. Okay, emailing. You can email one student or you can email all students. When you choose the email all students, it sends it all to a BCC so you're not sending everybody, everyone else's email addresses. Um, if you have instructors that use Outlook, be sure and tell them to click the Outlook users one because most email clients put a comma between emails um, when they put them in the field, Outlook wants a semicolon. And so that's the reason why there's two different links. If you have a large registrant list, usually over 50 or 60, uh, ASWOG will break, will give you an email all, but it'll also give you groups. The reason being is the, the um, you are the HTML code you've used to create an email link has a character limit of approximately 2,000. And if you've got a long list of people and their emails are going to exceed that, ACEWeb is going to break it up into groups so that you can group email group one and then email group two. This is what an attendance sheet looks like. Um, you'll get a list of the students, and then you'll get a column for each of the sessions that the class does. This one is two sessions, so we get a list of two that they can come in and check the box. A note we have on there, the limitations of HTML, you, you're really not going to get 28, more than 28 sessions on the page, and that's assuming they change it to landscape. And so if, you're, uh, if you've got a big class and they're not seeing it all when they print, they may need to print, save it to Excel and then um, use Excel to print it. And they may, you know, then they can do a little bit of playing around and getting Excel to print them a little better attendance sheets. This is an example of gradebook. For Chuck, we set Chuck to be level five. So Chuck gets the list of people in the class, and then he is allowed to edit the grade, the hours, and the credits. If he was not allowed to say edit credits, you would see the column, but it would just be grayed out. He wouldn't be able to edit any of the values. Then once he puts everything in, then he can save the changes, and that's saved back into the registration records on student manager. You can restrict grade 
book access on course by course basis. If you've got some classes that you do not want the instructor to be able to edit grades on, you can come to the ACE Web Info tab and change that web grade book access level value. It has pretty much the same ones as the, the one on um, instructor. Zero, they're not allowed to edit grade any, anything on the ACE Web. One, they'll get to see the course, but they won't get to edit grades. If you give them two, I'm sorry, if you give them three, four, and five, then they can edit stuff for this class. <clears throat> Another option that the instructor gets to do is he gets to submit a course proposal. There'll be a link on his instructor page when he logs in. Um, this is a form that they fill out. They give it a name, a description. Those are required. All the in other information there is optional. If they have an idea of how much they think the fee ought to be, what their class limit sizes are, they enter all that in. The second section has their information. They must enter a name, a phone, and an email. Um, the rest of it they don't have to enter. And then they submit it. And when the proposal is submitted, we, it creates a record in the module catalog course proposals area. It sends the instructor an email, and then it sends the office email staff a confirmation that they have submitted a proposal. In Student Manager, you go to Module Catalog Course Proposals, and you get a screen like this. This is the one that Chuck just submitted. It gives it a, just a generic code. It has the name, description, and everything that he entered in. If you all want to actually offer this class, the button there in the middle, the approve button, you click that button and it'll move this out of course proposals over into your regular catalog list. And then from there you can actually schedule a new up a new course for this. I'm going to stop there for a minute and see, Lori, do we have any questions that I need to answer now? No, no questions. I think we're going to hold things till the very end. So. Okay. Well, then the next thing we're going to be talking about is super instructors. A super instructor, they have to have a instructor record, but they don't need to be assigned as an instructor in it to any courses. You can control what courses they can see. Um, they will get in and they will search for courses. They won't get a list. Okay, so super instructor. This is Jason Allen. I set him up as a super instructor, and so he has an instructor record. Once again, his active box must be checked. You've got to set his access level to at least six. If you set it to six, then he can view rosters for any instructor. He set it to seven, eight, or nine, then he can view rosters, but he can also edit some of the information. And then the same thing if you want the, the um, super instructor to be able to email, that email, student email box has got to be checked. They're going to get the same credentials, login ID, the temporary password is the same. But when they log in, they're going to get a screen like this. They're not going to get in a list of courses, but they're going to get an extra section down here that says show courses that meet these specifications. And they're going to look um, for a specific thing. They're going to enter what field to search, what it starts with or begins, and their search value. And then they're going to click that Get Courses button. So here's an example. I said course name starts with Mastering Student Manager. And then I get a list of all the Mastering Student Manager courses that are in my, in my um, database. And you'll see there's an extra column on this one because I also am told who the instructor is. And then I also, because I gave Jason gradebook access, I'm also going to get a list of uh, gradebooks that I can edit. Now the purpose of having a super instructor is for someone like a course coordinator who wants to be able to see, keep a track of 
all of the courses they coordinate. It keeps you from having to put them as an instructor on all the courses. You can just create an instructor record for your coordinator, give them at least level six um, ACE Web Access level, and then they can be able to search for all the courses, any courses that they teach, or that their coordinator on, I'm sorry. Another feature that was just added um, recently, just early this spring, is the ability to limit super instructors. Now, by default, if you set somebody to be a super instructor, they're going to be able to search for any courses in your system. But if you want to just limit them to a specific group of courses, um, you can set up the limits, and then they're only going to be able to search for courses that you that's within the limits that you've set. So you go to their struggle, um, instructor record. This is Michael Lowry. First thing I do is I check that limit super instruct box. Then I add the subject code that I want Michael to be able to do. So this is in addition to setting the ACE Web Access level and setting the view student email and making sure that they're active. <coughs> now, the search, when Michael comes in and searches, he's only going to return courses that match the subject code. So I set him to ACEWARE. So he will only be able to look at courses that have the subject code of ACEWARE. If he tries to search for something else, in my example down there, I searched for course name starts with business, he would get a, lit, a message that says none of the courses you are authorized to view match your search request. So you can limit coordinators to only the courses that they coordinate by putting in the subject codes that you use for those courses. There are some special features. By default, when you see the courses, you see the title, the um, how many are enrolled, waiting, the max, begins, ends, and meets. But there is a way to customize that. If, say you wanted to add location or um, some other course information, the coordinator or something like that, there's a way to customize that list. Um, you can modify what is included in current, upcoming versus past courses. The default for that is to show active courses in current, upcoming, inactive courses in the past. But there is a couple of options that you can put on the template that will, for instance, move the courses to the past the day after they end. Um, you can allow instructors to view wait lists. There's a little extra thing you do to the template, and then there'll be an extra section if there's a wait list for the class, and they'll be able to view who's on the wait list. You can also customize rosters. Now, the default setting is set in the roster fields I and I that we looked at. But if you have one course, say we've got a conference, and we're handing out t-shirts, and they have a meal preference, and the instructor needs to know those things you can customize the roster for that specific course and then they'll have when they go to view the roster they'll have a couple extra columns. They'll see name, phone, email, meal preference, and t-shirt or whatever you choose to use. Lori, that is we can go on from here. I think you have enough time. Go ahead. Okay, and let's just go. Sorry, hold on. Oh, oh no, okay. that is where, no, that is where, I'm sorry, that is where I ended it. Um, I didn't okay. put the examples in here for the custom stuff. So does anybody right. have questions? I'm holding a couple for you, so we'll start with those, and while we're talking about those, anybody else with questions? This is the time to enter it into the question portion of the Citrix toolbar. So, um, first question. If the instructor emails the students, does the office get a copy of that email? No, 
there is because the thing about when you email when when you as a user and the instructor in this case would be a browser user, it's opening it in whatever they use for an email client. Like if they're using Outlook, it, it opens it in Outlook. And so you don't have any control. I believe there is a way to um, include the office email into the, I, have, I think Stein did that as a custom piece one time. Um, to add it in to where it adds it to the BCC list, but of course the instructor has complete control and can remove that. So I can't, you know, you can't guarantee that they would get a list. They would get a copy of the email. Uh, a couple questions I'm combining here. How old is the super instructor option? Do we need the to update the 8.3.5 for this? The super instructor has been around for a few years. As long as they're running at least 3.1, they should have the capability to be super instructor. The super limiting super instructor has only was added in, I believe, February of this year. They need to be on a current version of Student Manager and a current version of AceWeb to be able to use the limit super instructor option. Okay. Uh, Janet's asking for a copy of the PowerPoint, and I'm sending her back a message that says that we'll post it in the webinar archive tomorrow. Yes, we'll post that for you. Uh, can you play with this on the Ace Web demo? Yes, and actually, on the Ace Web demo, there are uh, three. You, you pick a drop down: regular instructor, super instructor, or limited super instructor. And you can test all three options. The password's entered for them, so they don't have to try to figure out what the password is. So just go out there and but check you're it able all out. To see. Yeah. Yes, you're yeah. able to see examples of all three. Excellent. This is a tad bit outside the scope of the, the discussion, but it's still pertinent, so I'm going to go ahead and ask. And I'm going to read verbatim because John was very good in his example. Can someone be an instructor for a class but not show up on the list of instructors on the web page? We offer a conference and build a custom registration page, and we don't want the instructor for that conference to show up in the classes for community ed. Hmm. You can. I'm trying to remember what. Could you just make the instructor inactive? Well. Unfortunately, the problem with making an instructor inactive is that they're not in the list when you go to assign them to a course. And um, so I'm going, uh, if you're, I assume you're still seeing my screen. We are. Okay. I was just going to go to help, so. Well, and, and it's not going to come up. I'm sorry, my satellite connection is just not going to let it come up with being connected. Um, ask, tell him if he can if he can send me his email address. I, I can will do that for you. check that out. There are some there are a couple options, but I am not sure that there is a good enough option to do what he wants. So I will look and get back with him on that one. Uh, I think I'm asking this question the right way, Christina. Is the could could you use Super Instructor for program coordinators? Yes, yes. So, that yeah, was initially so that would what it was meant for. Yeah. I'm I'm not teaching a class, but I I'm the program coordinator for a series of classes. You put me in as an instructor, give me at least level six. And then I can just go in and search for my classes and check up on them, keep track of you know what the enrollment is and everything. Especially if I don't have, it's especially good for people who don't have student manager access. Maybe you've got an outside coordinator that you want them to be able to check on their own classes. 
And if I didn't ask that the right way, Christina, let me know. Okay, she says that's the answer she's looking for, so that's good. Okay, <laughs> yes, yes. That is really what Super Instructor was meant for, was people, you didn't have to assign them to classes for them to be able to get online and do, do course, you know, enrollment and rosters. Okay, and we're getting down to the very last questions. If you've thought of anything, this is the time. Uh, otherwise, I think one last question, Cheryl. For okay. instructors submitting course proposals, do they have to be an existing con instructor in the system or can they create a new account? They are not allowed to create instructor accounts online. We There's no ASWEB teacher that lets them create their own faculty records. So they would not get the link unless they were already an instructor in their system and you have actually given them the ID and the temporary password to log in well and also set their access level. Now there is a suggest a course feature that any user can access. You just need the templates and a link but not the course proposal part. And I believe we started right exactly on time, and we are three minutes early getting done. Darn, we're just good. Yeah. Very good. Sharon, are you still there? I am still here. Very good. Anything to add? Did we forget anything? I don't think we forgot anything. The only thing I was thinking is a lot of people may like to see the answer to John's question, and so we may need to send that answer to the entire group via email. So. We can all learn from other people's inquiries, so I'd like to do that. Great. Watch in your email for a follow-up email then. Cheryl, excellent. Thank you so much. You were just as good here as you were at the conference. <laughs> I attended your okay. session at the conference, so <laughs> always cool, calm, collected, and ready with a very good answer, and we appreciate it. Thanks, everybody. Great. Have an excellent afternoon, and we will talk to you. August 12th is our next webinar, so let's uh, let me just come back and uh, show you that date. August 12th, 1:30 Central. Introducing Ace Web RWD for mobile devices. This is also a, a Cheryl development, and so good going, Cheryl. It looks really good. <laughs> We're excited about it. So we will see you then. Watch your inbox for an email invitation or check the website in a little while and we'll have a link up for you. Thanks, everybody. Have an excellent afternoon. See you then. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone.